At Kroger Pharmacy, CARE is making it easy to get vaccinated. CARE is helping you stay protected from flu, COVID, and RSV. Seasonal vaccines are available seven days a week with evening hours. CARE is giving you a shot at staying healthy this season. Walk in whenever is best and get multiple vaccines in one visit at your local Kroger Pharmacy. So come and get the protection you need while protecting those around you. Kroger Health, a world of care is in store. Visit Kroger.com slash vaccines for more. Restrictions and exclusions apply. See site for details. At Kroger Pharmacy, care is making it easy to get vaccinated. Care is helping you stay protected from flu, COVID, and RSV. Seasonal vaccines are available seven days a week with evening hours. Care is giving you a shot at staying healthy this season. Walk in whenever is best and get multiple vaccines in one visit at your local Kroger Pharmacy. So come and get the protection you need while protecting those around you. Kroger Health, a world of care is in store. Visit Kroger.com slash vaccines for more. Restrictions and exclusions apply. See site for details. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Second Estate. John Hendricks alongside Ross Jackson. It is a fine Monday. Um, it's 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 a different Monday. That's for sure, different Ross. Uh, we said we'd be back here if something happened. We kind of anticipated something happened with the Saints because, honestly, their hand was forced. I mean, you couldn't have yeah. sold this, right? But no. uh, the Saints move on from Dennis Allen, and they announced it on Monday morning. They say relieved him of his duties it doesn't matter how you want to slice it right like i mean they made the move but what's interesting is how it came about like uh, the way that dennis allen eventually got the boot right like i it wasn't just the panthers loss right right that's got to be the big thing like you have to look at sort of the sorry i didn't i didn't i didn't take take the baton on that one john that was my fault that was my fault i'm a bad relay partner uh, no, you're good. <laughs> I lost us the hundred meter. Uh, but yeah, no, you're right. Like this goes way beyond just the Carolina Panthers game. This goes beyond the 2024 season, man. You got to look back at 2022, 2023, and just them not being able to reach their, the standard that they set for themselves uh, coming into or coming out of the Sean Payton era, which make no mistake about it is the golden era of the New Orleans Saints. And so you saw a bunch of streaks end. You saw a bunch of firsts happen. Uh, and a lot of those firsts did not go the way uh, of, of Dennis Allen. And, and look, we said this yesterday. I, I want to say it again as we, we start today. This is a human being impacted sure. in, a, in a negative way. So you're not going to catch us on this show, come out here and celebrating or anything like that. Right. We understand, though, that this does bring a lot of excitement for the future. And I think it's okay to yeah. be excited about the future. And what could potentially change while also not necessarily being excited that uh, a human being lost their opportunity. Uh, he's going to land. He's going to get somewhere. Denver, uh, you know, he's a great defensive mind. He'll be fine. Uh, but I do want to acknowledge that before we, we go too far. But yeah, the, the, this is a move that had to happen and the New Orleans States got it done. The thing that was surprising is that they did it in season, which also goes to show you, as you mentioned, their hand was forced, just how serious the situation was. Yeah, just the willingness to be able to say, okay, we're going to change this. I think that's that's what the biggest takeaway is here. And, and look, you're right. It is a human being. And and if I'm Dennis Allen, I probably don't do anything for the rest of the season. I just kind of rest up or do whatever, get my mind away. Mm-hmm. If he does go somewhere really quickly, I mean, yeah, yeah, spend some time with your family because let's face it, he has been – uh, grinding since he got here day one, all this other stuff. It just didn't work. The product just didn't work for him. And so look, you know, it, it's, it's somewhat quote unquote exciting because they made the change. Right. But again, there's the human element to this. I mean, you never wanted to see Drew retire. You never wanted to see Sean step away. Right. You never wanted to see some of this stuff happen, but it does. And it's just part of the business. And at the end of the day, this is a business and yep. it's it's good to see that they finally saw what we saw that the business results were just not there. They weren't yeah. getting done. It wasn't getting better. Yeah. I, and I think too, that making a move like this shows your team, your roster, your players that you're serious about their dedication. Yep. 
that you're serious yeah. about what it is that they're going through and what the situation should look like versus what it does look like. You know, the standard versus the expectation versus the reality, right? Like that's always the trifecta of evaluation that you're looking at. And then on top of that, maybe a little bit of a not so often discussed storyline here is that this also proves to players outside of your organization that you're taking this seriously. There's a lot of question marks about that when it came to this team. Are they really taking it seriously considering that maybe this firing to a lot of people should have happened it, like it's long overdue and everything. And so getting this done now proves something to your team, the players that are in your facility, to your staff, shows accountability finally. And also, or not finally, but again, right? Because I, I would say the Pete Carmichael firing was accountability, right? Um, and it proves something to the players outside of the facility as well. Yeah, I, I mean, that's what we harped on and talked about after the, sh uh, the, the game, you know what I mean? Like the ramifications mm -hmm. of keeping him in role just doesn't set a precedence. And again, you're at a point where the NFL trade deadline is Tuesday. Saints aren't supposed to have a fire sale. I'd be really surprised if they do end up moving anybody. But yeah, at the same time, this is about repairing process now. Now that you've got your interim head coach and Darren Rizzi, we're going to talk plenty about him. But the fact is, mm -hmm. you like you said, showing the players that the organization does care. Because, you know, again, it was reported that the owner, Gail Benson, had solicited the players for feedback and got feedback, right? And, you know, shout out to Nick. Underhill at NOF for giving mm -hmm. us a peek behind the curtain, and it was a, a necessary peek behind the curtain, right? But you know, yeah. at the same time, you know, it just couldn't continue, and you kept seeing the subtle, not so subtle jabs. You know, I mean, Alvin Kamara always speaks truth. Yeah, like two things I love about him, and even Tyron Matthew, like those two are probably the realest people. Like they s just tell it like it is. Like he's mm -hmm. not gonna it and neither was Tyron even talking about his play on the field but Alvin's going to tell you like it is and that's one of the things I've always respected about both of those guys is that they don't dance around stuff they're not this rah-rah cheerleader type stuff they're going to tell you what like I've, I've said it you said it if you ever want to get a pulse on where the team really is at just go talk to Alvin Kamara he's going to yep, tell 100% Tyron's going to be 100% honest with you and so uh you know for them to obviously see something happen and for these players to see something happen i mean you've seen carl granderson's reaction on instagram that was very mm -hmm. i don't think that's going to be the last one um but you know again you you see how divided uh everything was and the writing was on the wall and, and and you just start seeing now that as you peel the layers back this was the best move for new orleans yeah yeah absolutely after uh after the loss to the Carolina Panthers, a team that the Saints looks at themselves as like the exact opposite of, not directly in terms of comparing themselves to Carolina, but you look at Carolina, the number of head coaches that they swing through, the, the level of expectation that's kind of like the microwave level of expectation that David Tepper has, the impatience that they show, um, the, the types of roster moves that they make, all those other things. The Saints do things almost virtually the opposite of the Carolina Panthers. And then when you go in there and you lose to that team, who you also blew out at the beginning of the season, it's kind of the straw that broke the camel's back, right? And I mean yeah. literal straw. Like it's, it's it, it, that's how that's how minuscule this win was in the overall decision to move on from Dennis Allen. And so I think that that's you're you're looking at you know now you're looking ahead to the new era of New Orleans Saints football, what it can be. It's not going to be ready in 2025. It's probably not going to be ready in 2026. If the Saints are smart, they give themselves as much time. They go into this rebuild, which is what it's going to be. Anytime you replace your head coach, it's a rebuild. Anytime that you're doing that, it's a rebuild. It does not matter. Anytime you replace your head coach or you're replacing your quarterback. And so if you approach this rebuild with the same fervor that you approached maintaining your cohesion in the past, you're going to have a very successful rebuild. That's the way that I look at this for New Orleans. They need to just completely turn their nose like completely 180 on what their own expectations of themselves are, but approach it with the same level of ferocity in order to be able to really, uh, or ferocity, excuse me, in order to be able to uh, maximize this opportunity that's now ahead of them. Yeah. And, and I think you're right. It's opportunity because now mm -hmm. you're looking at a situation where you essentially have three months of evaluation to be done, yep. right? Like whether you're a player, yep. a coach, uh, it doesn't matter. Darren Rizzi's going to be there and we're going to talk plenty about him here soon. Um, but, you know, 
everything's now in focus. Like now you're looking at whether you're a free agent, whether you're on the roster, it, it should probably be a little bit uncomfortable. Like I think a lot of players will get behind Darren Rizzi. Like most of the rosters, are, yeah. uh, obviously that's an easy sell, right? But yeah. at the same time, the the details the accountability all these other things like it's just time for these players that are expected to perform to go out there and perform like you now yep. you got rid of the problem quote unquote now it's time that you actually go execute and deliver and you turn in the same results obviously that's a, a different conversation altogether but you know players are going to be playing for jobs you've said it before that 31 other teams are going to be looking mm -hmm. even if they don't move on from their pieces from the trade deadline. Uh, again, Marshawn Lattimore's future here is is uh, is questionable. Ryan Ramchek, he's probably going to retire here soon. That's going to be something to worry about. Uh, do they keep a Chase Young now? Do they keep a Willie Gay Jr.? What do they do now defensively? Because Joe Woods is going to be the defensive coordinator here, but Dennis Allen's kind of bread and butter. He picks up, picks out his defensive guys. So how much of a turnover is there going to be defensively now? Because I could see maybe some different coaches moving on now, or they move on from different coaches in some aspects, but you know, there's a lot of, of things to, to weigh out over the next several months, but the good news is they made the move early enough to be able to put themselves in a position where they can at least evaluate and have a heavy yeah. evaluation period. Yeah, and you get an opportunity to look at the young guys on your roster too, right? Mm -hmm. In terms of being able to say, okay, these are the guys that are going to be the cornerstone that they build around in future years. There's obvious players that are part of that conversation. Teleyesi Fuanga, for instance, who's been excellent as their starting left tackle after being drafted this season. But looking back to previous draft classes, Alante Taylor is a guy that needs to be a big focus for this team in terms of retention and making sure that they're building around him. Um, mm -hmm. figure, he's one of the reasons why you can look at a Marshawn Lattimore and say, okay, there's the benefits to trading them. The Saints could get away with doing it if they choose to. Again, I'd be surprised if they did. But, hey, I was surprised that the Saints moved on from Dennis Allen, their head coach, midseason. So, yeah, right? <laughs> so, like, if one can happen, then certainly the other can too. And so I think that players like him, Kool-Aid McKinstry, Rico Payton, you look over at the safety spot with Jordan Howden, you look over at wide receiver with Chris Olave, probably not going to see him for the rest of the season. And so once you get Bub Means back, getting a look at, uh, at Bub Means, figuring out what you really have in Mason Tipton, all these other players. You have the Dallin Holker. You have the real opportunity here to get a look at all of these players and get things figured out in terms of who you want to keep and where you want to go. I think that the off season should be an off season of change for new Orleans right away. I don't think you need to delay it. Um, you know, there's only so many things that you can do, but everything that you can do, I think you should look to turn over as much as you can. Um, there's no need for retention in this conversation. Everything has to be about laying your foundation for the next era. And some players are going to be a part of that, but I expect that a lot of players, maybe more than people expect, won't be. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that's fair. I mean, they, you look at their free agent class, I mean, there's just guys that aren't going to be back. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. even the guys that are presumably going to be on this roster next year, you know, is that something that you want to stick with? Or do you want to say, okay, well, we're going in a different direction. The Saints have shown that they they will do that. And, and look, Paulson Adebo is a guy that I think about, like, I'd love to have him back in New Orleans. But like you said, do they say, OK, now we want Alante outside and Kool-Aid outside. Mm -hmm. That's our future. We don't want to pay Paulson, even though we probably could get him back on a really good, you know, I wouldn't say Tim team friendly deal. But obviously with him getting hurt, the major injury, his market's not going to be something on mm -hmm. the high end. Like he's probably going to have to take a one year flyer and such. Um, you know, it, can you build around what you have in the secondary with Jordan Howden and and you know how much more do you have when Tyron Matthew? Do you bring back a Will Harris? I like mm -hmm. the concept of Will Harris. I think he's played exceptionally well at, and up until the injury. I think that's a piece that you look at. Linebacker, yeah. you have Pete Warner that you locked up on a big already extension. set up. Mm -hmm. and, and so from there, do you roll with an Anthony Orgy and, and just maybe develop him a little bit more if you have Michael Hodges on the defensive line? Good call. You got to figure out a pass rush situation, right? Like if you're not going to use cam jordan is he going to stay here right like do you right. just keep him in here to play 10 snaps a game no i probably right. don't think so are they happy with what they have in the interior with colin and, and nathan shepherd or is it something where you say okay let's look to brian brzee and and christian boyd as our future you know there's mm -hmm. just so many different questions because i think the shakeup here with da is probably more on the defensive side for me not necessarily sure. the offensive side yeah, yeah, I completely agree with that. I think one of the other things you have to look at is what do you do at quarterback, 
Um, sure. Like Derek, Derek Carr is going to be the starter for the rest of the season as long as he stays healthy. Uh, but do you take advantage of the last two games of the season to give Jake mm -hmm. Hayner a start and give Spencer Rattler another start and see where those guys are, right? The opportunity to to get them into more situations where you can get more exposure to them, get more of an evaluation of them, whatever that might be. And then do you talk to Derek Carr about the opportunity of like, hey, you have a no trade clause. Do you want to get moved somewhere that you're not so that you're not having to deal with a rebuild? Do you want to be somewhere where you're a part of that or do you want to be somewhere where you're competing and then give him the option to say yes or no give him the option to say no i want to stay with my guys and if he does that great willing to take a little bit of a pay cut in the process might as well might as well ask the question right yeah okay you're, you're going to be told no if you don't ask and so yep. you know you're going to have to look to what that future looks like the saints effectively have until the third day of the new league year in march uh, to figure out what they want to do with Derek Carr and and for Derek Carr to figure out what he wants to do, where he wants to be, what he wants to navigate and what is effectively the twilight or the beginning of the twilight of his career. Is a rebuild something he wants to be a part of or not? And both answers are completely acceptable, but give him the opportunity to be able to say that he can finish out this season and then make that decision. And then if you end up moving on from him at that point before that third day, saves you a little bit of money, got to eat some dead cap, but saves you some immediate salary uh, and then, you know, allows you to be able to get started with that rebuild with young quarterbacks on, on, on rookie deals, even if you don't draft one in 2025. Yeah. And, and I'm with you. I think that's a big, big part of the puzzle is, you know, does Derek want to stay here now that DA has gone is, is Clint right. Kubiak back I, I, again, we talked about it. I think this offensive staff, unless, something just goes to the wayside. I think they got the right offensive staff pieces. Mm -hmm. I just think now that you have it, you just need to look at where your players are at, evaluate, you know, because I think Derek Carr can fit this system. You know what I mean? But yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that, that what you want to do going forward? Right. And so right. there's plenty more to, to yeah. dissect here. And what does your new head coach want to do? Exactly. Right? That's yes. the other thing. Yep. And we'll tackle a lot more of that when we come back from the break. Hey folks, John Hendricks here, Second and Saints, wanted to talk to you quickly about Underdog because it is the place to play if you're a sports fan looking to win money while watching sports. With over 5 million happy players and $2 billion won, Underdog makes it fun and easy to cash in on all your favorite athletes' performances. Compete against other players by just selecting higher or lower on two or more player stats, and you could win up to a thousand times your money. So turn every touchdown into a win with Underdog. This season, Underdog is going to be running a special promo or bonus almost every single day like profit boosts, discounts, or free picks. Plus, all new users get a free pick. You could win up to a 1,000 times your money just by choosing higher or lower on player stats like passing yards, interceptions, touchdowns, and much more. Create entries with all football selections or mix and match across your favorite sports. Underdog puts the power to cash out in your hands. Now you can either keep riding with your entry or tap the win now button to cash out whenever you want. And with Underdog Rescues, you can get your money back and receive a promo if an early injury causes your entry to lose. With Underdog's Double Flex, option you can even take two l's and still have your entry to be a win so go download the app today and use code second saints to get up to a thousand dollars in bonus cash instantly that's code second saints now here comes the legal jargon must be 18 or older 19 and older in alabama and nebraska 19 and older in colorado for some games 21 and older in massachusetts and arizona and present in the state where underdog fantasy operates terms apply void in colorado concern with your play call 800 gambler or visit www.ncpgambling.org arizona 1-800 next step 1-800-639-8783 or text next step to 533-42 new york call the 24 7 hope line at 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope ny 467 369 back here on second and saints john hendrickson ross jackson ross before we broke uh look you were bringing up some validity on and where do they go on their next coach right like mm -hmm. let's start and say darren rizzi's obviously the interim head coach because i want to yeah. go and tackle and unpack this like where do they go after this because sure darren rizzi's coming in here i thought his press conference was like riz is always a guy that is you can tell his passion you can tell he's just so football smart about what he's done and in confident right and so i loved his press conference he was quick to acknowledge the elephants in the room i mean he was quick yeah. to say there's things i don't like like there's things that we're going to evaluate things that need to be changed. And with him being a special teams coach, he was right. Like he does a lot of uh, scouting for starters and he does a lot of player interaction, like almost every player. And he said, even like the quarterbacks he had a meeting with, but it's true. All the players learn special teams at some point or another. And Darren Rizzi has been the guy for years. And so 
what do they get in Darren Rizzi for starters? And what kind of expectations do you have going forward since they only have, you know, eight games left? Yeah, uh, I, I think what you get in Darren Rizzi is that you get a guy that is not afraid to challenge people. Um, you know, you and I have talked for years now about how Darren Rizzi is the loudest person on any practice field at all times. Uh, he demands, he commands, he does all those other things. And players absolutely love him is the thing. He walks that fine line between being the impactful force and being the trustworthy friend for the for the players. And sometimes you need both of those things. And I think that Darren Rizzi does a very good job of giving you both of those things. My favorite thing, one of my favorite things that he said during his, I guess we call it introductory press conference as interim head coach, um, is when uh, Nick asked him about what's your, what is your coaching philosophy? And the first thing he said is, I'm an accountability guy. Um, and we've heard over and over again for years and years and years now, not years and years and years, for three years. It ain't been that long. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's been 84 years. Yeah, uh, I'm sticking to say that. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I love it. Oh, that uh, you know, that like accountability, right? See something, say something is something that Alvin Carrera talked about, the fumbling stuff and everything. When Mark Ingram and Sean Payton were both on, I think it was Kay Adams show, and they were talking about and Mark Ingram said something like, Yeah, well, if you were around the fumbles, I like that would I know that wouldn't be happening, like those kinds of things and stuff like that. Like all of that showed you that like that accountability that things being let go in practice and all that was of detriment to this team. Um, Darren Rizzi and Sean Payton worked very closely to one another. Darren Rizzi, I think, learned a lot from Sean Payton. But I think that there's a lot of enforcement in Darren Rizzi as well. And, and I think that's something that I'm looking forward to this team being able to take advantage of because this is a team that right now needs to be coached. And what they need to do is that they need to be – they're, they're the, a coach has told me this before, and I love this phrase – you either want to be coached or you want to be told the truth. And I think that Darren Rizzi is somebody that tells the truth. And that's exactly what this team needs right now. Yeah. And look, it's exactly I, what the I, organization I, needs right now. Actually, yes. let me go beyond yes. the roster. Sorry about that. Yes. No, you're fine. Uh, I was going to say, because of what you were talking about, I, I remember telling this in, I guess, training camp maybe, but I said, because we went through this exercise of like the coach that you would not want to have to like go That's look right. at after a play. Yeah. I said Darren Rizzi because yeah. I know yeah. that dude would chew my butt out. Like if I did something, <laughs> I would not want to get on that man's bad side. And look, y'all, right. he comes from a Bill Parcells line, a yep. lineage. What I think people, if you didn't see or you haven't heard or you don't know, blue collar type of worker, right? Like, and of yep. course I'm paraphrasing, but he said in his presser, he's never been handed anything. He was mm -hmm. a walk on in college. Yep. He was a free agent in the NFL. He started coaching in D two football. Like this is a guy who has legitimately earned his stripes. Right. And so again, he's a guy that players respect because he knows what he's doing. He has confidence in what he's doing. And if you don't do the right things, you are going to hear about it. I don't know how many times in training camp, he would fire off at a player. That's why I said yes, I would never right. want to get chewed out by him because yeah. if you did something wrong, he was the loudest guy in the field and he was going to let you know about it louder than what, you know, Foster was probably when we saw a training camp, like the guy just has that, that attitude. Like it's, it's reminiscent of what Sean Payton would tell you and coming from a Bill Parcells tree, that's yep. the type of thing that you would expect is you don't let the little stuff go because like he said by his rule, the one eleventh rule, like one player affects the whole team, right? Like it yep. affects the entire scheme. And so, look, I, I'm I'm excited at the concept of Darren Rizzi coming in here, at least showing something different. Like if it means yeah. somebody's not doing their job on the offensive line, defensive line, linebacker, corner, wherever it is, and they pull that guy out of the game and they bench him, whatever the case may be, send the message because at this yep. point, if I'm a player your feelings don't matter, right? Like you yeah. got what you want. Now it's time for you to hold up your end of the bargain. Yep. If you want one moment to look at where you can see the dichotomy, the differences between Dennis Allen and Darren Rizzi, look no further than week 18 of last year when Arthur Smith went yelling at Dennis Allen after the game, after the most controversial touchdown of all time, apparently. Um, and Dennis Allen is kind of trying to like de-escalate the moment and all this stuff. And Darren Rizzi is up there wanting all the smoke. He's yelling back at um, at uh, Arthur Smith, firing back at him, all that other stuff. Um, 
we've joked around a lot a little bit behind closed doors. I won't go into details in terms of asking like what Derek Rizzi actually said and stuff like that. He did not give the details. I will say that much. Uh, but like, there's your dichotomy. That's the guy that you're getting instead of the guy that you had. That is an exact look at the difference between these two guys. And that's not to say that one is better than the other or one is worse than the other, but you could certainly say that one's very different than the other. Yeah, uh, completely. And again, what they need is is that guy right now. Like mm -hmm. it's just been kind of like attitude. Fun. Well, yeah, I mean, because you, you look I mean? at and again, we, we're going to beat this dead horse. But Dennis Allen kind of the keep doing what you're doing. And and again, right. play Saints football. Well, if you don't really know what that standard is or you're not even living out that standard, then how the hell are you supposed to know what to go do? Like you could right. be like, I think I know. I, I'll, I'll go yeah. try it. And then you don't do it. And you're like, well, you're not doing what we asked you to do. Well, you haven't even set the expectation in the first place. And so, uh, again, I'm excited in that aspect that at least maybe there's a little bit more accountability here. And again, he's got the buy into the locker room. They've handled this situation from everything I've seen, heard and been told that it's been handled the right way and that people were receptive of it. And it's, it's the mindset now is take your day off on Tuesday, but Wednesday come ready to work because we're going yep. to work and they're going to look at everything. They're going to look at the practice schedule. Like we have a pretty set schedule every week. I'm mm -hmm. curious to see if that changes somewhat Same. or anything like yeah. that. Um, but, you know, it, it, it's one of those things where I don't know if we'll see all of the visual changes that happen. Uh, Riz is still going to have a hand in special teams. Phil Galliano is going to still have uh, or he's going to have a little bit more of expanded role. They're going to bring on a quality control guy that's supposed to be announced here soon. But, you know, again, his his role and duties don't necessarily shift. But, you know, for him, again, it, if he does something like, let's say, a, a five and three, a four and four, do you think that's enough to say, OK, this is our next head coach and we don't really need to go look? Or do you say he's just going to fill in the blanks? He's going to get us where we need to go. Uh, and then we're, at the end of the year, we're going to actually see and do this thorough co coaching search to see what we want. Yeah, I, I think and I'll say this, so this as outright as I can. I think it would be utterly irresponsible no matter what happens this season for them to not expand their coaching search beyond their own facility come the offseason. The Saints totally could go agree. eight and no with Darren Rizzi. They won't. They could go eight and no with Darren Rizzi throughout <laughs> the rest of the season. Although Foss look, Foss and Rowe, right? He said, like, listen. Maybe it's the maybe I can't remember exactly what he said, how he said it, but like maybe it's the the, the athletic confidence or the, the confidence of the athlete or whatever. But he thinks they can do it. If they do it, fantastic. I still think even in that situation, you go out there and you do your due diligence to look at what else is out there. I think you have to do that. Uh, but I do think that Darren Rizzi, if he earns it, and honestly, I think he will, uh, needs to be brought back at least for an interview and to be considered. And I mean, genuinely considered, like actually considered for the head coaching role if he does enough by season's end. And I would say that doing enough four and four gets you the interview, five and three gets you seriously considered. You know what I mean? I, I think that that's really what you're looking for. I, I would argue probably that it's three and five and four and four, but I'm just going to, I'm, I'm pushing the, the goalposts a little bit here uh, because yeah. I do think that the Saints, in undergoing a new era, need new ideas, need new perspectives, need new voices. Uh, but who knows? Darren Rizzi could be the guy to bring all three of those things or go out and get the people that bring all of those things, right? So yeah. I, I think that that is a big part of the equation this offseason uh, is that Darren Rizzi needs to be considered. And, th and that wouldn't be um, if he earns it. And that wouldn't be out of the ordinary. The Saints interviewed not only Dennis Allen as an internal hire candidate, when in 2022, but they interviewed Darren Rizzi as well. So they've shown before that they already think of him as a potential. Yeah. And, and again, here's the thing is look what happened when you went with familiarity and you thought continuity was going to be the thing. That's right. The thing. And I'm yeah, not 100%. saying that would be Darren Rizzi because I think his coaching style is complete opposite of what Dennis Allen does. Right. Like, I mean, yeah. you just see it out there and we're going to find out what it is. I mean, you know, I, Five and three is probably the best case scenario. Now, if he goes six and two, I think you've really got to take a look at it. But I just don't know if you're going to magically start stringing together games. I mean, I think they're going to have the initial burst against the Falcons. Now, am yeah. I going to sit here and tell you they're going to beat them? No, because I, 
I just don't know. Like they got one thing and teams typically respond to this and it is the Falcons. It would go a long way, but you know, right behind that you got with the Browns. Uh, and so, and then you got a bye week and then you got the giants and then you've got, uh, the, you got the, sorry, you got the Rams and you got mm-hmm. the Rams and then the giants. And so yep. it's not going to be easy because you could realistically maybe go two and two in that stretch. Right. But you know, what what's going to be the the you know the litmus test for Darren Rizzi you know what i'm saying is it going to be the results or is it going to be how he keeps the locker room together or how he gets players different I, I think that's what is probably a little bit more fascinating to me not that you know the results don't matter in this case but i'm looking at how this team responds how the locker room responds and you're going to find out quickly the guys who want to be here and the guys who don't want to be here yeah, that's a really good call that like just as much about it, it could be, you know, you can you could stumble your way to four and four. You could stumble your way through to an impressive, you know, end of season record without actually seeing the things that you really need to see in the facility. Um, and you can't let that happen. Right. You have you have a, a lot of bad teams on the rest of your schedule. And so you can't let that be the thing. And and so. I mentioned something that I said on tomorrow's episode, on, on Tuesday's episode of Locked on Saints. So some of you might might hear this a little early. Um, Tyra Matthew said that one of the things that they need to do as a football team is get back to having fun again. One of the things that Darren Rizzi said was they're not going to be boring to watch. He right. said, I promise you that. Uh, that's all good. It's exciting. That's nice. The organization, however, cannot get fooled into confusing fun with effective right Mm. fun with improvement those two things can't get can't get confused and so you have to be fun and productive in order to really be able to maximize your opportunities coming out of this season if you're darren rizzi i think he has the capability of doing that don't get me wrong i'm not trying to say that oh he's just going to be fun he's not going to be this but you got to you know you got to make sure because you have bad teams on the schedule. You got to make sure that if this team does go on some kind of an impressive run, that it's happening because of what the teams are doing and not what the opponents aren't doing. Uh, but I do think that that can be the case. I do think that the Saints will win uh, more. Here's my kind of bold prediction, quote unquote. The Saints will win more games under Darren Rizzi than they won under Dennis Allen here in 2024. So I'm looking for the Saints <laughs> to get at least three wins before the season yeah. is over. If they're able to do that, then I think, yeah, you absolutely have to at least consider Darren Rizzi, have him come in an interview, do the whole thing, make him a part of the coaching search, uh, but also look outside the facility and look at your opportunity to change everything because I do think that there's value in that. Yeah. And, and look, for me, even going beyond the record or whatever the case, and I'm sorry, I don't mean to use these euphemisms of going beyond or something, because I think that's just, it's it's enough. Enough, enough is enough. Right. But look at it, you know, realistically, I said, okay, they could have, they could beat the giants. They could beat the Browns. That's two more wins. So you get to five, but beat a better team, beat a couple of these better teams. If he beats the Packers on the road, if he beats the Rams at home, if he can beat uh, when Washington comes to town, mm-hmm. I, I count those as a little bit more. And if you could beat the Bucks at the end of the year, those four wins would tell me more about this team than them just beating up on the Giants and the Browns and stuff. Like if you could beat those four teams in Rizzy's stretch and then maybe get bonus Alanyap or something, then that would speak pretty much volumes to me, just the sense that, okay, this team under him can beat a better team because that's what's been their problem is that they can beat up on the low teams. They can't beat the better teams because they get in their own way. Right. All the things that just unravel for them. And that's what I, I, I'd pay a lot of attention to. What's the last time that they legitimately beat a team that's better than them? Well, you can't but count it, Dallas because Dallas sucks. Can't so. count Dallas. Dallas. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Jeez. Sorry, them boys. Jeez. But, like, look, it's just, it's, it's like I wrote, it's fool's no, gold. It. That's all it was. Right. It was fool's gold because you thought you were great. And then look how it was like the Patriots game, you know, when you beat them 34 nothing. Right. That's not who you were. You know, you, you beat up on one of the worst teams in the league. Okay. What do you do? Like, right. go beat somebody good. You know what I mean? Right. And so, that's just my thing. Was, and so was it maybe the the Rams in 2022? God, no, the Rams were three I mean, and seven in that game. 
Yeah. I, I'm, I mean, again, I, I'm trying to think, like, keep going down the rabbit hole, but uh, every every superior team I can think of, they've lost to. Yeah. Like, I mean, they did beat they did beat the 13 and three Philadelphia Eagles, but that was a Gardner Minshew led 13 yeah. and three Philadelphia Eagles. Right. So that's right. not a team that they were better than based on that. Right. right? So, and then, and then last year, like they didn't beat anybody that they were better than at all. And so like, that's one of those yeah. things where like, I mean, this team just had this team played to who it was. It never played above, never punched up. Right. Um, right. And I, Darren Rizzi, I mean, you know, he's a he's a grinder, right? Like all the things yeah. you highlighted about him, just like in, in in his personal life, I mean, all those things right. that you highlighted about him, like he's a dude that punches up, and so I'm, I'll be curious to see if the team adopts that. Yeah, and, and again, it's, it's all they care about is it starts with the Falcons, right? Starts yep. with Wednesday, wisely, new era. It's all those things, right? And, and it's again. Uh, we're going to find out, you know what I mean? And I don't think there's an added pressure on him to come out on Sunday and say, you have to punch the Falcons in the mouth. That would be an added bonus if they would ab- were sure. able to do that. Because I, I mean, if, in, if something crazy happens in the South, it just tanks. If you did get to seven and 10, eight and nine, you never know how bad this division could be. You could luck yourself into a wild card, but they got to start, winning these division games. They got to do all these other things. Like the deck's already stacked against them, right? Like you've already had three NFC South losses. It's not going to happen, but we're just <laughs> going down the rabbit hole. We've taken the pill yeah, from yeah, yeah, right. Morpheus yes. and we've yeah, gone we down the rabbit hole. We took the, the Riz pill. Hole, right? took the Riz pill. <laughs> <laughs> Rizius. That's what we're going to call him. Rizius. I love oh, it. Man. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, it's, it's exciting in some aspects. It's exciting but not but you know i think the other side of this in the fallout is you know uh the reality that you know this is going to be another year without playoffs right like i think that's just kind of the reality here and and again a a rebuild a retool a reshuffle i don't care what you call it it's got to be something and and you call it whatever you want to call it and again i I sound like a broken record because i said this on the the other day but do the things necessary to put yourself in a conversation because we understand the cap will be limitation. And again, I, I understand the other side of the coin with the cap because they can always get under the cap. They can always do this, kick the can, do all this stuff. The problem and the scrutiny where it comes into play, where it's actually right is when you don't get the results. Like what's the point in shuffling all this money, uh, money over when you continuously miss the playoffs? Like Bingo. if you were making the playoffs, Nobody would care, but you're not. Right. So your strategy isn't working. And so they got the Ram check, you know, stuff to worry about. Marshawn's contract. They've got to figure out what they're going to do with Cam Jordan. I mean, there is a lot of big money that they're going to have to do. And, and the salary cap is projected to rise like it does every year. I don't know how much it will rise, but every other team gets more salary cap too. So it's going to be interesting. They've got three players on void years. Uh, I think it's Chase Young. Juwan Johnson and I'm forgetting the third person. Somebody else is set to be a free agent after this year. I'd have to look really quick, but you can talk while I do that. Maybe <laughs> I will absolutely talk while you do that. It's no, going to come I, to me. I'd be like, Oh no, <laughs> <laughs> no, I completely agree though. Like this is your opportunity to evaluate and figure all these things out. And I do think that like Juwan, oh, like, there's Juwan. No, you said Juwan. You said Juwan. Keep looking. Oh, it's Juwan, Chase Young, and Tano. Those are the three that are void. Deals. Tano, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Who hopefully they one. get back. Who did I say before? Yeah, you had said, uh, you had said Juwan, and then I don't remember the third person now. Chase no, Young I can't remember the other third person. Yeah. yeah, and Young, it's, and then it was Tano. Wrong. Anyway, sorry. This is medicine. how John and no, I kidding. actually <laughs> talk to one another throughout the day. It's like I forgot. Oh, I this forgot. This is what you get with us. Like yeah. we're never going to be like this how many times- professional proper thing. Like, come on, guys, y'all know that. How many times? How many times have we sat next to each other in the the uh, the facility, and I open my laptop and go, I can't remember what I was doing. <laughs> what was I doing? Like that's always like I don't know what I was doing. Same. Uh, yeah, but uh, but yeah, I mean, look, like if the Saints wanted to go the route of you know, not necessarily like they do like a light kick the can down the road. Like they can, they can kick the thimble down the road a little bit here and they could, you know, with between uh, if they, if they were to trade Marshawn or whatever, uh, then obviously that helps. But then even if you don't, you could still restructure them. If you're not trading Derek Carr, you could restructure Derek Carr and then, and then uh, Ryan Ramchick retires and then boom, you you're compliant with the salary cap. You don't have a lot of spending money, 
Yeah. But you're compliant with the salary cap. And then a whole bunch of other players end up probably getting cut at that point. And this, this, yeah. I think this offseason would be the first time that we actually see the salary cap impact the Saints from a cut perspective. We've seen it from a not able to add talent perspective, or at least not able to add talent on long term contracts perspective. That was last season. But the, um, actual cuts perspective, I think we see here in 2025, but it's time. It's time to do that, right? Like you're not looking at yourself. You should not be looking at yourself as a Super Bowl contender in 2025. And that's not to be, you know, it's not to tell Saints fans that they, they shouldn't care or anything like that, but like it, the team is finally going to be embrace realistic. where they are. Yeah. It's, yeah. The team is finally going to embrace where they are. Be realistic, be pragmatic and, you know, set yourself up so that you are building that 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 winning culture, that winning foundation, excuse me, uh, as you move ahead. So this is this is the time to do all those things. Yeah, and look, you do have a relatively young injection of your roster talent, and so mm -hmm. how do you evaluate that? And that's probably for a future episode where we literally could go down up and down the roster and say, here's the pieces I'd keep, here's the pieces I'd I'd maybe say okay are expendable, or I'd maybe try to say okay I don't want to bring them back or something. That's probably a good exercise for later that we can do, yeah. but. You know, look, it's 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 definitely a decision that has to be made. They have to draft better. They have to get more out of their draft picks. They have to make sure that they hit on their draft picks. I mean, shoot, at this point, I think they got more undrafted guys than they do have drafted guys in the last right. several years on their roster playing. And in some aspects, that can be good. But also with that comes, you know, inexperience. And the way you only get experience is by being uh, present and playing on the field. And so mm -hmm. I... I like the concept of, of some of these undrafted rookies playing and some of these other guys playing, but you know, you've got to be willing to say, okay, we're okay with growing and developing these guys. And we know that they're going to mess up, but let's be realistic about what kind of team we are. You're not the compete now, go for a playoff and win the division type team. You're just a team that's trying to get better, improve, get under the cap and, you know, cap compliant, whatever the case may be. And then, see what happens. Maybe you can turn it around quickly, but typically when you do a rebuild, it's going to take a few years for it to happen. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it should like, that's the other thing too, is like, that's good news that like, they don't need to be in a rush. They don't have to try to make this work in 2025. They could just spend time. And I think that that's the other thing with this new head coaching search, patience, 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 patience. And this is an opportunity for them to really prove that they're not the Carolina Panthers to prove that they are more like the Pittsburgh Steelers go out there, hire the head coach, and then be patient. Don't bring somebody in here just to do a rebuild. Help them bolster your product. Fire that coach and then go out there and pitch their product to a new head coach. Like, don't do yeah. that. Don't become that organization. Be patient. If it doesn't work, be honest with yourself, but be patient and work your way through this. I think this has to be a multi-year situation. And that doesn't mean you can't compete and fight like hell in between while you're doing it. Absolutely. Of course that can happen. Look at the um, Houston Texans. They weren't expected to be a playoff team last year. Yeah. They weren't expected to be in that situation, but they got there quicker than they expected. And how did they do it? They did it by letting things come to them. You look at the exact opposite, the Carolina Panthers. They trade up. They go and get the number one overall pick from the Chicago Bears, and then they draft Bryce Young, who, don't get me wrong, is the guy that just won against the New Orleans Saints. I understand that, but I think we all know that Bryce Young's not going to pan out in the NFL. And so mm -hmm. that's the situation that the Carolina Panthers are in for being impatient. Don't be the Carolina Panthers. Be patient. Yeah. Be patient. Yeah. And you were reading my mind because I was literally going to say is I, I know people like, oh, let's get the Dan Campbell, which I'd love to see somebody of his caliber. But you mentioned Houston. Mm -hmm. I was thinking more along the lines of a D'Amico Ryan's like With find you. that type of guy to get into the building because he's relatable as a player. He's also relatable as as a person and just all the things. And you see his passion. You see how well he's able to do it. And mm -hmm. this is a guy that was playing football not that long ago. Like he's not right. a, a very experienced, tenured coach. And I don't mean that as a disrespect thing, but no. it's just you look at it. He hasn't been in his league coaching for 25 years or anything. And maybe the Saints need to go in a younger direction. It, it, it just depends. you got to evaluate and go with everything that's on the table and take your time doing this. Like, again, I know you got the senior bowl that comes up after the season. You've got the combine. And because they're going to have a new head coach, they're going to be able to start their offseason workout program a couple weeks early. That's but, right. You know, yes. yeah. So that moves up the timetable for us a little bit, too. Yes, so. I love it. <laughs> yeah. So there are some other bonuses and caveats here. And, and with, mm -hmm. you get a first year head coach and all that other stuff. But, man, uh, and crazy no time. hard knocks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, we keep no hard knocks. avoid the hard knocks conversation. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh, just made my night with that one. Oh man, we can finally put that crap to bed for at least a season, right? Golly, yeah, right. That's wild. Uh, on that note, Ross, my man, what's coming up at uh, Locked On and LouisianaSports.net? I know we just yeah, absolutely. Night, so, but what more is coming? Because a lot is coming yeah. here. I know, I know, I know. Uh, so, uh, you know, obviously, like reaction episodes and stuff like that are already up over at Locked On Saints. Tomorrow's episode is about identifying nine different head coaching candidates going into next year, Darren Rizzi included. So we start that conversation. Wednesday, we'll take a look at the players that survived the trade deadline, the players that survived the trade deadline, and um, are the young players that, knowing that they're going to be in the building should be built around. So we'll dive into that as well as a bunch more, but different bunch of different angles that we'll look at uh, throughout that. I'm going to be honest. I'm probably going to spend more time talking head coach for the next few weeks and the actual games that are upcoming, but we will yeah. also do game previews and stuff like that. We'll have that for you here on second and saints as well. Uh, Louisiana sports.net today. I broke down the news. Why? The firing was a good choice or was the right choice. Why Darren Rizzi was the right choice. And then the ripple effects that come from, this move in terms of what the rest of the season looks like looked at odds for the next head coach, all those other things. And then tomorrow, my first piece in the morning is going to be about the future of Derek Carr, which is another one of those ripple effect pieces. So we'll take a look at sort of the impact of things as they continue to move ahead uh, for a duel. So whole bunch of stuff uh, upcoming for you, which you got coming up for uh, everybody over at uh, St. Sue's network. Man, well, a lot obviously after today, and and I just put out yeah. something on Darren Rizzi, and so definitely go check that out on uh, SI F Sports Illustrated, and just see how uh, you know, just to get a little bit more insight on Darren Rizzi yeah. and some of the quotes he said. That was uh, something, and then um, of course, if you haven't seen what Gail Benson and Mickey Loomis had said about firing and Dennis Allen and what Allen had said, it's all up there too. You know, uh, that's caused a little bit of controversy with Mickey, but you know, yeah. What do you expect? Who is scheduled, day, I guess, in some after. Yeah, yeah. Who is still Big scheduled one. to do his radio show Tuesday night? By the way, so yeah. we will yeah. hear from Mickey Loomis. It just won't be yeah. media asking questions, like all the right. media asking questions. Right. It'll be fascinating to see that. But you know, again, there's so many different directions. Again, I put out a trade deadline piece too. Again, I don't expect them to be fire sale mm -hmm. mode or anything like that. There are some potential targets that could be on the move, but. I think for this team, with them moving away from Dennis Allen, uh, I think they want to keep most everything intact unless they've said, we just don't like this player, we don't want this player, let's get a day three pick for him. You know yep. what I mean? Like, I right, think that right, would be right. the only other thing. Or, you know, something else. But a uh, lot more to talk about because this is going to be a interesting week. I mean, this is probably the most interesting week since we've had since training camp when or rookie mini camp when we saw Clint Kubiak first in action with the rookies. You know, Spencer Rattler. Yeah, like, right. Right. That was the last time I think when that was level of excitement. I mean, week one was obviously a big one, but not something sure. that was this monumental of a change, right? Like that's yeah. just kind of the thing. So, but you got uh, so many different avenues to choose when you get your Saints news. So we just appreciate you giving us your time for sure. For be sure to check out Locked On, LouisianaSports.net, Saints News Network, and those other guys too. Everybody does some great Everybody's work, and great everybody work. brings a different opinion so mm -hmm. i can sit here and name everybody and i don't want to leave anybody's name off but you guys know as well as i do there's plenty of talented people that cover this team diversify diversify yep. your bonds you know what i mean yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> so, help you to diversify your bonds bro yeah. um, the the other and and when we say that by the way we mean a lot of people even those that aren't like on the beat yeah and in the facility like yeah check out a lot of different opinions and you're going to hear a lot of different names head coaches all this stuff like this is really the time like taking a lot of content and support a lot of creators uh because you're going to see a lot of people rise to the occasion so yeah. I, I think a lot of people deserve the support when it comes to that yeah well said and so again That's we man. appreciate you tuning into us don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button a lot of uh new subscribers so thank you for coming thank to you. the channel and stuff only look forward to driving more content because we've got a lot of content that's going to be coming soon because of everything that's been happening. But for now, we'll be back soon enough. Thank you so much for tuning in. On behalf of Ross Jackson, John Hendricks signing out for Second and Saints. Y'all have a good one. Love you. Have you ever wanted to learn a new language? Maybe you were inspired by a recent international trip, became obsessed with a foreign film or TV show, wanted to communicate better with a loved one, or just felt like developing a new skill. 
With Rosetta Stone, learning a new language is easier than you thought. Rosetta Stone has been a trusted expert for 30 years with millions of users and 25 languages offered, including Spanish, French, Japanese, Dutch, and more. Learning is immersive and designed for long-term retention, so you fully learn to speak, listen, and even think in that language. Don't put off learning that language. There's no better time than right now to get started. Listeners can get Rosetta Stone's lifetime membership for 50% off. Visit rosettastone.com slash today. That's 50% off unlimited access to 25 language courses for the rest of your life. Redeem your 50% off at rosettastone.com slash today. At Kroger Pharmacy, care is making it easy to get vaccinated. Care is helping you stay protected from flu, COVID, and RSV. Seasonal vaccines are available seven days a week with evening hours. Care is giving you a shot at staying healthy this season. Walk in whenever is best and get multiple vaccines in one visit at your local Kroger Pharmacy. So come and get the protection you need while protecting those around you. Kroger Health, a world of care is in store. Visit Kroger.com slash vaccines for more. Restrictions and exclusions apply. See site for details.